Shalom, everyone. Due to the present circumstance, we are not able to meet physically for our Sunday service. We pray that things will get back to normal soon. Before uh, Pastor Jason preach, I would like to share a short message with you all. In response to the movement control order issued by the government, we have cancelled our Sunday service, GGs, and prayer meetings in order to curb the spread of coronavirus by reducing movement. We should also be wise to take all the necessary precautions, including the use of masks, sanitizer, hand sanitizer, and practice social distancing. The seriousness of the situation has caused the public much fear and panic. While it is natural to be fearful in such a situation, in such a time as this, let us put our trust in our almighty God. As the psalmist said in Psalm 121 verse 2, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He is faithful and he will watch over us and keep us safe. There are 365 times where the Bible mentions fear not. One verse for every day of the year, urging God's people not to fear. When God, say, when God said fear not, he means it. He is well able to protect us in every fearful situation. He loves us too much to allow us to become victims of fear. God demonstrated his love for us by sending his son to die for us, setting us free from the kingdom of darkness. Jesus' death on the cross breaks the power of death, sin, sickness, hell, and Satan. In this season, when the world is focusing on the coronavirus, our focus is on the Lord. He is the source of our stability and peace. Let us focus on God in worship, prayer, and reading of His Word. May these uncertain times lead us closer to God. While the world looks at the crisis in uncertainty and despair, God looks beyond this crisis. He's preparing us to be the pure bride of Christ that Jesus is coming back for. The glorious bride without spot and wrinkle mentioned in Ephesians 5.27. May this situation be a time of fresh encounter with our God. As we face this pandemic, let us remember the words of 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Yes, even in this pandemic situation. So the Lord bless you richly and grant you his perfect peace. So now I have a, a few announcements to make. Firstly, due to the lockdown, our church meeting will be temporarily cancelled for these two weeks. The leadership will re-evaluate the situation and make the appropriate decision. Secondly, as we are now posting sermons online, we highly encourage discussion and prayer with your family. We will also be adding the discussion questions and prayer points following the online sermon. And thirdly, for the tithes and offerings, you are encouraged to give online. Please refer to the website for the church account number. So before uh, Pastor Jason preach, I just want to say a prayer, opening prayer. Our Heavenly Father, I want to give you all the praise, thanksgiving, and adoration. In a time when we face this pandemic, we can have an inner peace that passes all understanding. We fix our eyes on you and trust in you, our Lord, who is the maker of the heaven and the earth. 
I pray for protection for every church member. Pray for recovery for those who have been infected by the virus. Pray for wisdom for our national leaders and government agencies as they work hard to contain the spread of the coronavirus. I pray for Pastor Jason as he bring the word of God to us. Let your word go forth powerfully, bringing encouragement and strength to your people. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Okay, well, good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening. I'm not sure when you'll be watching this, but uh, either way, welcome to our, I guess will be our first quarantine church. So uh, I'm glad that you are watching this and you are still with your uh, family together to uh, hear the Word of God and to worship together. Uh, we are in the middle of our sermon series, the Abundant Life series, and today we're talking about the Jesus-centered life. And I'm not going to take a long time uh, this this morning or this evening to to uh, share the Word of God, but we're going to get into some scripture to encourage us uh, during this time. Um, I think the title, the theme of a Jesus-centered life, is very uh, important during a time like this to keep our eyes on Jesus, especially when. The world is trying to put our eyes on everything else that's going on right now with this, with this virus and all of that, trying to take away our attention from the Lord. So our, our uh, foundation scripture this morning is going to be in Colossians, Colossians chapter 2, and we're looking at verses 4 through 10. And we're going to be talking about standing on our faith and knowing what we believe. So starting in verse uh, 4 in Colossians chapter 2, it says, I am telling you this so no one will deceive you with well-crafted arguments. For though I am far away from you, my heart is with you, and I rejoice that you are living as you should and that your faith in Christ is strong. And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. So you are also complete through your union with Christ, who is head over every ruler and authority. And what we're talking about now is standing strong in our faith. And we're going to look at each one of these verses and we're going to talk about standing strong in our faith. And there are going to be a few points. There's going to be two points within this uh, uh, sermon where we're going to stop and have discussions. Okay, so I will let you know when you can pause the video and discuss with your family. So don't worry, I'll let you know when. So in verse 4, he says, so that no one will deceive you. It's a very important thing. He's saying, he's telling you, he's beginning this passage by telling him before this, he lists out all of these things. And he's saying, I'm telling you this so that no one will deceive you. See, there's many, there are many, especially from other religions, other beliefs that will try to deceive us, try to deceive us in our faith, try to point us in the wrong direction from Christ. Uh, Romans 16, 18 says, such people are not serving Christ our Lord. They are serving their own personal interests. By smooth talk and glowing words, they deceive innocent people. But in actuality, these are not other religions. These are deceptions. They have, their, they have many teachings and well-crafted arguments to confuse us. So we must have a working knowledge of our faith so that we will not be deceived, so that we will not have our, our attention taken away from Christ and deceived by something else. 2 Timothy 2, 15 says, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we have to know what the word says about our faith. An excellent time to dig deeper into our faith is when you are locked at home and can't go anywhere. You can take this time of quarantine to dig into God's word, to get the word hidden in our hearts. 2 Peter 3.15 says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And it only comes from being in the Word and knowing what the Word says. 
So be, before be, becoming born again, many of us fell into deceptions along the way. First uh, Thessalonians 1 Thessalonians 1.9 says, You turn, from God, turn to God from idols to serve the living, true God. So many of us turn from other things. We turn from other religions, other idols, uh, New Age beliefs, even atheism. We turn from those other things, those other deceptions, to the living God, the Word tells us. All of their arguments sound good, but we can find no peace or meaning in life from them. They're counterfeits, all of those other things. Only in Christ can we find meaning in life and peace in our heart. Philippians 4, 7, it says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So in a time like this is when we need to hide that word in our hearts, that he is the one that gives us peace. He gives us peace beyond understanding. When the world around us is going crazy, we can have that peace in our hearts because Jesus gives us that peace. Moving on in our passage in Colossians, verse 6 says, you must continue to follow him. Being a Christian is not simply about going to church, okay? This is a great example that we are at home today. You're at home with your family. Being a Christian is not because you came to this building and sat with a bunch of other people and we call that church. That's not what it's about. You can have it right there with your family at home. It's a daily relationship that we build with the Lord. That's what being a Christian is about. Proverbs 3, 6 says, In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. So basically what that means is put him first. Put him first. I, I like that verse as basically being the Old Testament version of Matthew 6, 33. It says, when we put him first, when, we, when the, the kingdom of God is first, all those other things will be added unto us. We have to make him part of our daily life. It's a, you know, an example would be between a husband and a wife. You know, the husband, they get married on that day, on their wedding day, and the husband looks at his wife, says, I, I do, I do, I do, all of those things, and he says, I love you on that day. But then the rest of his life, until they're 80 and 90 years old and die, he never once again talks to her or tells her that he loves her again. Would you say that that man has a relationship with his wife? Well, absolutely not. <laughs> we wouldn't say that. The same with a mother. A mother gives birth to a child, and she has she his baby spends nine months in her womb and she gives birth to this child and on that day she says you know I love you child and then never takes care of that child the rest of her life would you say that she has a relationship with that child well, well of course not but how many of our treating our, our relationship with Jesus like that we said a prayer one day at a at a camp or at a, on a Sunday morning service and we said Lord I love you and then from that day forward we never spoke to him we never opened his word we're never any relationship with him and we, we can't call that a relationship with God. Being a Christian is every single day making a choice to serve him. It's not a one-time decision, but a daily decision. James 4.8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. We have to make the initiative there after our conversion to draw closer to the Lord. We draw near to him, he draws near to us. See, God will not force himself upon us, but he'll always be pursuing us. He'll always be near to us. He'll never force himself upon us, but he'll always be there near to us. Verse 7 says, let your lives be built on him. When we build our lives on him, our faith will be strong. But how do we do this? How do we build our lives on him? Well, the, the easiest and most simplest way is through God's word, through the word, being in the Bible. The Bible must be a priority in our life especially in our relationship with him. Proverbs 3, verses 1 and 2 says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to you. So saying when we're keeping the commandments of God, when we're in his word, all of these things will have long life and peace and days added to your life. Everything that we believe comes from this book. Everything that we know about God Everything that we know about faith, everything we know about salvation comes from this. So how can it be anything less than a priority in our life? Do we really believe that these are the words of God? 2 Timothy 3, 16 is the one that we all know so well. It says that all scripture is given by inspiration of, of God. All scripture is given inspiration. It's good for teaching and doctrine and reproof, and you go on in that verse. So we have to make the word the priority. And verses 8 and 9 says, do not let anyone deceive you. In Christ lives in the fullness of God in human body. 
So don't be deceived. Jesus is Lord. The coronavirus is not the Lord. <laughs> okay? Hand sanitizer is not the Lord. Okay? Jesus is Lord. He is the one that saves us, protects us, and keeps us. Acts 10, 36 says, This is the message of the good news for the people of Israel, that there is peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. He is the Lord of all, no matter what the world's circumstances say. Know your faith so that no one can convince you otherwise, that nothing else can convince you that Jesus is Lord. Know that the hope that is within you is real. Be convinced of that. He is everything that we need. He is all that we need in our life. He is sufficient for everything in our life. And Christ is sufficient over all idols. He is sufficient over all idols in our life. Deuteronomy 5.8, God told us to, not to make any idols because he knew that they had no power. That's why he told us Jesus is the only one that had, has power. He gave us that commandment for our own good. He didn't give us these rules to weigh us down with rules. He gave them to us for our own good because he knows they will only disappoint us and bring us into heartache when we put other things in the place of God. That's what an idol is. An idol just isn't a statue or something we bow down to. An idol is anything that we put in God's place, that we put our focus, our attention, our love, our adoration, our worship to. Colossians 2.9, all the fullness of God in human body. We talked about that earlier. He is everything. Jesus is everything that we need there. He is no idol. He is stronger than him. So we cannot be double-minded in our faith. We serve Jesus or we serve something else, not both. Elijah asked the people how long they would divide their faith. If you remember, 1 Kings, he said, Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long will you halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And then the people answered unto him, Not a word. So if you want to serve God, serve him. If you want to serve the world, serve the world. But God will not tolerate both. And you can't do that, both of those in your life, and see victory in your life. A house divided cannot stand. So now we'll have some uh, discussion questions. So you can pause the video now. There's going to be two discussion questions you can discuss with your family. And uh, about these questions about, uh, about idols and how we have victory over those idols in our life. So you can go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, so we said that Christ is sufficient over idols. And secondly, he is sufficient over our circumstances. Jesus is Lord over our circumstances. No matter what circumstances we face, he is the Lord. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9 says, Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. See, in sickness, he is our healer. And we need to hear this more than any time, uh, I think, in, in, in recent history, we need to hear this, that he is our healer, especially what's going on in the world today, and we're all so scared to death of <laughs> stepping outside of our houses. He is our healer. First Peter 2, 24, he himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Psalm 103 Verses 2 and 3 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. No matter what you are facing today, you might be facing something today that's bigger than the coronavirus. Okay, the rest of us are, are freaking out about this coronavirus, but you've been battling something for years that seems so insurmountable. I can tell you that Christ is our healer, that by his stripes you can be healed, that he bore our sicknesses on the cross. In poverty and lack, he is our provider. You know, eventually, if this, this quarantine goes on and on, the, the grocery store shelves are going to be empty. <laughs> and, you're, and the shelves in your house are going to be empty. But do we believe that he is our provider? That in lack, that he takes care of everything. That he gives us everything that we need. Proverbs 10.22 says, The blessing of the Lord, it makes rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. Proverbs 8.20.21 it says, I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment that it may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I will fill their treasures. So in sickness, he is our healer. In poverty and lack, he is our provider. But most importantly, in sin, he is our savior. In sin, he is our savior. Colossians 2, verses 13 and 14. 
one of my favorite passages in, in all of the scripture. It's so powerful. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, has he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that so whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. More important than any sickness, any lack is our need of a savior, that the sin in our hearts needs to be taken care of, that our relationship that is broken with God needs to be reconciled. That is more important than anything. And I believe that during this time of, of panic and, and uh, that there are going to be people that are going to turn to Christ because they are looking at so many other things they put their hope in in life and realize they are faulty, that they are fake and they are deceptions, that only Christ is real. And that might be you this morning. So we'll pause again for another, for another discussion. Uh, so you can pause your uh, video now. We'll talk about some uh, discussions about how you've seen victory in your life over circumstances. So you can pause it now. Okay, so we said that, that Christ is sufficient over all idols. He is sufficient over our circumstances, and I trust you had a good discussion just now about that, about victory over circumstances in life of where you've seen God be faithful to you and your family. And lastly, Christ is sufficient over sin and death. He is sufficient over sin and death. He is the Lord over sin and death. I want to read again uh, verses 13 and 14 from Colossians 2. We just read it. I want to read it again. This time I want to read it from the, the New Living Translation. It says, you were dead because of your sins. And because your sinful nature was not yet cut away, then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all our sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. And I'll add on verse 15. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Being a Christian, we've mentioned this earlier, is not about just going to church or being born into a Christian family, okay? You've heard me say this before. It's like saying because you live in a tree that makes you a monkey, it doesn't work that way. It's about being born again. It's about being regenerated in your spirit. Not just a religious act that we come and someone says that you are saved, but a real moment when you connect with God and realize your need for a Savior, that you are a sinful person. And that you cannot be in the presence of God because of that sin, but you realize there is forgiveness available. And that that sin has been paid for by Jesus on the cross. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all, all things are become new. And that's what we call being born again. We're, we're not, when you're, that, that old life is taken away, that old sin is taken away, and you are made new again. So during this time of, of uncertainty, during this time of we're not sure what next day holds for our, for our country and even the world, you know, I just came all the way from the U.S. a few days ago, and if you think it's crazy here, you should go there. <laughs> but I'm telling you, this is a time when we need to trust Jesus. Trust Jesus, whether it be over our past idols that we've had in our life. Trust Jesus, whether it be over the circumstances that we're facing in our life. Or trust Jesus, whether it be over our own sin and our need for eternal life. We have to put our trust into Jesus. So we'll end with a few. We're going to have some prayer points that are going to be on the, on the video for you. And I'll talk about them here, these prayer points. And then at, after this, you can take some time with your family and pray. The first point, of, of course, is to pray for the current uh, COVID-19 situation, to pray for this, to stand firm that Christ is sufficient over any virus or disease, Okay. Uh, just stand upon Psalm 91, verse 10, that says, No evil will conquer you, no plague will come near your home. Stand on the promises of God. And two, pray for our families that we would always put Jesus first, not just in words, but in action. That we would have, uh, also that we have fathers and men that will lead our homes during this time as well. Especially when we're all at home together and we are with our family all day, every day, we see each other's face, we can get on each other's nerves. We pray that we are, the love would be there, that fathers would lead their homes, and that, uh, that Christ will be truly the center of everything we do. 
So take some time, pray together as a family uh, for, these, for these things, and believe that God is going to do great things, not just in our church, not just in Malaysia, but we're going to see great testimonies around the world because of this situation.